Today's top stories. Democrat Barack Obama's landslide victory yesterday to become the 44th U.S. president has prompted messages of praise and expectations of change from leaders across the Middle East and Europe. Iran's foreign minister Manu Cher Motaki today said that Obama's election was a clear sign of the American people's demands for fundamental changes in the country's domestic and foreign policies, saying, quote, We hope that the new U.S. government in practice can fulfill the demands of the people of that country to distance itself from the wrong approaches of the current politicians. Arab League Secretary General Amna Musa congratulated Obama and added that he expected change from the new president. But Iraq's foreign minister Hoshiya Zebai was more cautious, saying that despite what was said during the campaigns, the new president must look at the reality of the facts on the ground. In Brussels, European Commission President Jose Manuel Barroso said he hoped for a new deal that would invigorate transatlantic ties. And France's president Nicolas Sarkozy, currently EU president, said Obama's win had raised enormous hope throughout France and Europe. The Iranian military today warned U.S. military forces in Iraq to steer clear of its borders with Iraq, saying that it would respond to any violation of its airspace. Brigadier General Masoud Jazayari, a deputy commander of the armed forces, said that if the U.S. planes and helicopters were to violate Iran's airspace, the country would confront them. Quote, We therefore advise the Americans to be observant and to push their flight paths farther than the borderline so that such a mistake does not happen. According to a report today in the Financial Times, Iran's banks are struggling with credit shortages that have brought them close to insolvency, despite their relative international isolation. While Iran's largest banks, Mali, Sadarat and Sepa, have been hit with United Nations and international sanctions over alleged links with that country's nuclear and missile programs, the government's fiscal policies have imposed even further damage to the sector. The government has encouraged banks to lend to small businesses and the poor at the state-imposed interest rate of 12%. This contrasts with the inflation rate, which was 24.3% for the 12-month period ending October 21, 2008. According to unofficial figures, overdue loans in Iran have increased 75% in three years to around $17.8 billion. These stories and more at IranVNC.com.